Hey there, welcome to Fratello Talks. I'm your host, Nacho, and this week I'm joined by my colleagues, RJ and Lex. And we are going to be discussing uh, a little bit the current state of the uh, the watch industry and some things that we've noticed, some trends and, uh, and tendencies uh, that, that we've seen lately. Uh, but of course, before we do that, let's see what is on the wrist. Lex, what is on your wrist today? Um, something that is relevant while we are recording the podcast mm -hmm. because this is a, a Bravour watch it's from Sveria, from mm -hmm. Sweden, and it's uh, from their uh, Grand Tour collection. And this is La Corsa Rossa Quattro, mm -hmm. so it's a watch dedicated to the Giro d'Italia, which Love they're con currently uh, racing in uh, Italy. So yeah. I think it'll have either just finished or be about to finish by the time this episode yeah. comes out. Um, and the winner? What's your predictions? Yeah, Pogaccia, yeah, right? Pogaccia. It's got to be Pogaccia. Yeah, yeah. Do you it's think he'll go for the tour as well this summer? Um, if you tired. look at the competition that both Vingegaard and Evenepoel had a bad mm. crash and still recovering from that and, mm. and Pogaccia said that he was already recovering during the Giro. I don't know how people do that. Do, during a grand tour recovering for, uh, anyway yeah, that's but if nothing bad happens he will win the giro uh, have won the giro and he has a very good chance of also grabbing the tour which would be excellent amazing we'll we'll revisit that again in yeah. our cycling uh, podcast exactly, uh, exactly this summer yeah yeah uh, the perfect. other channel yeah. exactly <laughs> the third channel what's on uh, what's on your wrist today rj i'm wearing a omega constellation uh the 2648-1, mm -hmm. and it's actually the first constellation from 1952. Very nice. So it's 72 years old, and uh, yeah, I thought I saw you wearing a vintage watch. I thought I'll sure, strap yeah, on a vintage watch members. as well. Yeah, very, very nice. How big is that one? Uh, 35? I think 34.5 or something. Oh, uh, yeah. way bigger. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Looks very prominent yeah. Yeah. on the wrist. Very, very Yeah, cool. it's a nice watch. I think I bought it uh, not last year, but the year before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really, really nice. Yeah, I'm also wearing something vintage today. It's a, a, a Tissot. Um, I call it a Tissot Calatrava just because of the shape of the hands and markers are, are obviously a little mm -hmm. bit reminiscent of something uh, Patekki. Mm. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a Tissot solid uh, 14 karat gold, I believe. And it's nice. from the late 50s. Uh, and I bought it from the original owner back in uh, back in Germany. I think I, I told the story again also <laughs> on Fratello at some point. So hmm. I'll link I'll link to the Very article there. But it's uh, yeah, solid gold Tissot, uh, and uh, it's condition, um, right? It's really nice condition. I think that the story was he got it from his grandfather for his first communion, um, and never really wore it. Put it in a drawer. And uh, he lost his faith. There it sat for me. Perhaps he, mm. he apostate. That's he was an apostate and in the, in the Tiso owner, <laughs> uh, now former Tiso owner. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's a yeah, a really really nice looking watch. And for for its age, it just it looks fantastic. It's really amazing. amazing strap. Yeah, the amazing strap from uh, obviously from the Fratello shop. No, but I, I like this sort of amazing tan and gold, uh, yeah, tan nice. and gold combination. It's uh, yeah, it's a little bit uh, more summery, which yeah. uh, which is uh, yeah, also mm. relevant for for, nice. for 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 right now. Looks so, good. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thanks. Uh, so if let's uh, only let's it didn't have contrasting stitching. Yeah, well, that's just like <laughs> your opinion, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the <laughs> <laughs> um, these are very much kind of not exactly hype watches. Yours is a this little is bit relevant. maybe the it's most hype because it is made for about a, current a, a, events. Yeah, for a for Somewhere. an event. But the, the the how long has the, the the jersey been pink? I mean, probably for for quite a bit. Quite yeah, for quite a while. So a, for as long as the Gazzetto dello Sport, uh, the the, the <laughs> right. newspaper printed on pink paper, started yep. uh, the the the, the Giro. So, yep. And uh, they wore yeah. back then. They wore their cycling outfits made out of the paper because it was the lightest material no, available to no, them. No, 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 <laughs> <That's> no, <laughs> no. Okay. It's a, it's a fun okay. story, but no, it was wool. All right, <laughs> perfect, <laughs> it was perfect, wool. perfect from pink sheep. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, but. Let's talk about the, 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 was the these things that we've seen in the watch industry lately. Uh, I think that we'll title this something like like the the quest for hype uh, in in this uh, hype quest, is a new normal. The quest to be relevant yeah. and, and, and uh, in this in this sort of hype obsessed industry. What do we think about what what is currently happening? Some of the things we've seen with uh, with sort of uh, recent collaborations, uh, yeah. recent releases, recent trends uh, in the watch industry. Do do we? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think you're referring to the Tag Heuer kit. So the Tag Heuer kit is, is is kind of the the crucible think, for this. Uh, yeah, this discussion. and I think that the the uh, comparison was easily made to the Moon Swatch, for example. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. So I think the Moon Swatch in 2022 was like a, more or less a genuine hype. It Even didn't, at Swatch, they yeah. they said, okay, this this might be something big. Mm. Yeah. We don't know yet. Yeah. yeah, and you noticed it because the moment the doors opened, they they kind of panicked and said, "Oh, 
we need to yeah. go to, from two watches per customer to one and otherwise mm. we mm. we have an issue and the queues were so long and it was crazy like yeah. a, a crazy thing yeah yeah, yeah. um and I feel that that was kind of genuine. And yeah. then later on, they did the... The, the blanc the, the, No, yeah, they did the watch first, the watches, the moon swatches oh, yeah. with the, with the oh. gold hand. and uh, Oh, the year, the one year of 12, uh, for every 11, full moon, I think, uh, even, uh, or 11, yeah. And, and yeah. I think, yeah, that's already, it's not, it's a kind of a made-up hype. Definitely. And I think the same happened for the... It wasn't even the, a hype. For, no, for the, for the blanc Want to be hype. Uh, yeah, and I think the same is for the Kith Hoyer, that it's something sought after. It's It's not a genuine kind of watch that is being revived and people are all going crazy about it. Well, I believe that the hype might have been more bigger and more mm. genuine if it would have not been a collaboration. Because mm. there are a lot of people that had that Formula One watch in the 80s. And I think yeah. those people were, oh man, I can buy that watch back again or give it mm. to my mm. son or daughter or whoever. Or the son and daughter buy one now because yeah, their dad yeah. had one. And I think that's more of yeah. kind of a genuine thing than what it was now. It's it's also I, because I think that the 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 the, the moon swatch <laughs> and also the uh, even the the the, the plastic uh, fifty fathoms are original products. Bioceramic. Yeah. And the uh, sorry. sorry, yeah, oh, major flaw here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the uh, that the, the Formula One is is basically a re-edition. It's it's mm. it's yeah, nothing. I, it's nothing new. And, no, but and I, then, I don't and mind. But if there's no, me neither. But then yeah. putting the changing the yeah. label and all that. That is a sort after yeah. uh, mm. uh, hype. And I don't mind reeditions at all. Sometimes no, no, no. I I like reeditions because those are classics for a reason. Often, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, or fun watches like the Formula One or, or even uh, Tag Heuer sometimes yeah. does something yeah. that is a really nice. Mm. Uh, the Skipper, for instance, is yeah, a yeah, good exactly. example of a very well done yeah. uh, reedition. And I in also my don't mind collaborations if done yeah. if no, done well me but this felt a little bit like let's, let's create a hype yeah yeah and that doesn't that that feels uh, yeah and, it, and it's it's a little bit sad because i think there's in in itself there's nothing wrong with with a with a hype because that's mm. that i think that's of, of all times yeah. maybe we didn't call it hype but then yeah. of course yeah. we Use it so much, we have hype beast. Yeah. Um, so yeah. The, the 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 connotation to the word hype has become almost as negative as the connotation of the word woke, and that's a little bit sad. It kind of devaluates. Is it devalues? Devalues. De devalues. Yeah, devalues. It devalues yeah. what uh, uh, what's really happening. Mm. It, 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 Especially with the uh, with the with the moon swatch, uh, the, but sorry, with the with the tag Hoyer, yeah. is where they mm. just search for it they they want it that yeah. everything is aimed it's, at creating it's this and, and therefore yeah, yeah but therefore it, yeah. it what also doesn't help of course if you price the watch at a 1500 uh, dollars yep. or what, what was it yeah. well it, it, it went the other a, way the, yeah. the the moon swatch took something expensive and then and then created a a, a less expensive yeah. more fun version yeah. of it and then yeah. what what happened <laughs> yeah, with the formula true. 1 is that it yeah. took something that was that was relatively inexpensive, inexpensive yeah. and and which continues to be inexpensive yeah. because if you want to buy one of those it original ones like a luxury item yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah. yeah, yeah, and I feel that a lot of brands went overboard with these, with the pricing, but also mm. with trying to hype. But it, it's not something you only see with watches; it's also with other no, look items. At, look no, at the Remova you, suitcases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Insane. What, what about uh, if you look at Jordan uh, sneakers? Uh, sneakers. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, you also have the feeling that the the, uh, the 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 hypes are a bit over; that people are tired of them. Yeah, well, they're they tired. Yeah. And yeah, and it has uh, to be an organic process to some degree. Like it has to be something yeah. where where something comes where it just it yeah. just strikes a chord. Yeah. And it's not even with the watch enthusiasts. Like I think the Moon Swatch really transcended into just the wider public. And you yeah. see how many people wear those those watches. Uh, and then I think that the closest to to a sort of hype was uh, also something like the Tissot PRX, where that was just not yeah. so much a hype. But just a good product that was well yeah, that, priced that yeah. a lot of people. It was a healthy was a hype. It was a, a, a yeah, hype. yeah, it was a yeah. Yeah, but there's certain things that feel almost a little bit, uh, a little bit forced, a little bit like like if you're if you're second in line, it's already a little too late. Like mm. for example, we we saw, uh, and this is perhaps not not hype, but but kind of it felt very like following in the footsteps of. Um, we had the the Vacheron two two two. 
which came out. And the timing was quite good because it, it, it sort of struck a chord with the audience. It was really a, a remarkable thing to see it. And, and, and there was some hype surrounding it at Watches and Wonders. Yeah, well, it, and then, it, and then, yeah you could call that a micro hype uh, yeah, or a yeah, niche hype. Niche hype. <laughs> it's definitely, no, it's, it is hey, not, is hype hype if it's niche? Maybe. I don't know. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I, I, I think, it, no, in, yeah. in a it's way it is. And you sold it two, two, two. And now this year, of course, we uh, had the, had the polo from, yeah. uh, from Piaget. Yeah. I'm, there are definitely similarities. There is, there is definitely mm. uh, um, tapping into sentiments with, yeah, uh, with, yeah. uh, with the target audience. It's yeah. definitely look, yeah for something and to a time that's appealing to people like the yeah. 80s and yeah. 90s yeah. now obviously you see it coming back in in in, in fashion yeah, yeah, yeah. even with with the uh, young uh, young uh, hip folk mm -hmm. right um kind of proving that young i'm neither hip young folk? nor hip uh, hip folk, <laughs> hip folk. Uh -huh. i don't know <laughs> them, 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 those uh, those kids out there wearing their <laughs> they're wearing their wide jeans and their chunky sneakers i used to do that back in the day no but it's uh, it's it's one of those right like where you see that it's all a little bit cyclical yeah, and yeah. then you see okay well yeah tag hoyer goes it well this very was kind of hip in the, in yeah, the yeah, late yeah. 80s and then suddenly they think they think well let's yeah. rekindle this and see if it, if it did works did you like the original uh, f1 no, it's a bit. Um, <coughs> I did for my time because I was very yeah, young okay, at the time. Okay, shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, uh, I did it. So, I was a little sorry, bit older. Not even on my I radar. Do. I do. It, it, sorry, I didn't like it. It yeah. looked. It it looked cheapish. It felt cheapish. Mm. It just wasn't the thing. It just it it. To me, it looked like uh, Tag, uh, Tag Heuer trying to uh, mm. make money, uh, trying to prevent from uh, going bankrupt. Yeah. which probably Lex, was the, listen, was the, the case. The eighties were all about. Camel Trophy watches. Yeah, no, that's oh god, yeah, you're so right. Revive trophy, man. and it was probably also also <laughs> for for a lot of switch brands, uh, it was all about survival. Yeah, but a yeah, bit. and that's good a that you bit. say that because I feel today it's about that again. <laughs> it will be about that again <laughs> because you see sales are 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 plummeting on watches, and you I think a brand. They can't be lazy anymore. No. I think the last, uh, like uh, during COVID and right after COVID, anything sold. Mm. Yeah. D d it doesn't matter what. What yeah. Fashion made or Patek or Ro yeah. everything sold. Yeah. Mm. And I think some brands are very lucky that they're still high in demand. But I think for the majority of brands, they feel the pain of today. Yeah. Mm. So they are looking actively yeah. and sometimes too actively for something to sell. And I think that's yeah. where this... Yeah. Tag Heuer but comes hype from. is not the way, in my opinion. No, no. especially no. not artificial hype. Um, just create something really nice and, yep. and, and which they did and stand outish. Yeah, they did it with a the glass box. Then it will go. The, the glass, glass box, box is super people, nice. People really enjoyed that, and we really enjoyed that. And I yeah. think that that was a, a great product. But then following it up with something that feels a little bit forced is is just. And I mean, you know, let's not single out Tag Heuer no, no, too much because we no, also see just the latest example. Yeah, we, of we, it. we see other brands uh, that that obviously uh, capture. Uh, um, you know, I made a joke about the the, the Met Gala, but you see ev so many celebrities wearing Cartier. Yeah. And and you sort of think, well, there's this brand is really getting a hell of a n not a second wind, but they're yeah. they're really uh, getting their their time in the spotlight right yeah. now. And we see also that in in mm -hmm. pre-owned prices, which is obviously a completely different story to to, to sales now, but they're one of the strongest uh, brands, yeah. right? Like we see that they're they're the ones where the line is still going up and up and up. Yeah. And and so in some way, it's uh, you have to separate like the the general hype from like where there's actual interest from people. That it could yeah. be even a little bit quieter. I mean, Cartier is by no means quiet, but no. but no. it's still and perhaps. I, uh, I I feel a little bit. What is tricky, but I think we touched upon it before, mm. that now times are slower, that brands regret that they increased the prices so much during the last five <laughs> years. Mm. You cannot go back. <laughs> yeah, no, that's very so true. Yeah. I think the main problem is that sometimes they had these buyers that bought their watch from brand X or Y and bought the second one again from yeah. the same brand. And I think that will not happen again that soon in these kind of mm -hmm. turmoil mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. periods. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you just make a good and nice watch, uh, d not 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 uh, depending on any price range. I think it yeah. goes. Uh, uh, I think only the brands that are like over 30, 40 k, they're without pain. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the audience there are because the, their audience is without it. pain. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, especially brands under ten k, they they must feel the pain yeah. of today. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then you can come up with a collaboration, and that's not a bad thing. But yeah. Don't make it too artificial. 
Yeah. No, that's uh, no. so I believe it. Yeah, they but they're, they're I think they're, cl- they're clutching at straws. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it sometimes uh, yeah. seems. Yeah. It, it feels like they they almost see uh, the success of other collaborative efforts, and they think that's the way to do yeah, it. We also and then you sort of think it's not really just yeah. just stick to your your product to yeah, what you know it, works yeah. to what I you know your audience what, likes, and just what, what Oris did last year with the Kermit was kind of fun. Yeah, they tried to hype it, and it it did not really take off. But yeah. it's a it's a funny watch i mean some yeah if you like mm. kermit you can buy the watch but what they did this year with the uh, akis the new akis is clever because yeah you would expect that they would try to move up everything to their in-house yeah. movements or proprietary yeah, they didn't. movement yet they make it also available with the Salita Salita. Movement. Yeah. so it's still in affordable range if you mm. want to to go yeah. proprietary That's movement definitely with definitely a, i don't know eight or ten years warranty yeah. and so on and so on yeah. you can buy the more expensive yeah, yeah, yeah. ones and so get, at least they give you yeah. the option and you also get a little bit more you get the the micro adjust exactly the, the yeah, clasp you get some, yeah, some still there's like work, some, yeah, some uh, watch. additional because i think that selling to people just hey it's an in-house movement and then i think the wider public goes yeah so uh, okay <laughs> and then yeah 10-year warranty Okay, uh, yeah. five day power reserve. Okay, to us that's like stuff where we think, oh, that's yeah. that's actually yeah. quite nice. But to them, it's like, well, this one and this one look the same, and the price on this one is is the one I I would rather yeah. pay. And so you kind of have to, you also have to be a little bit aware yeah, of that. And I clever. think that they proved that yeah. that's that's yeah. that's a way to like really tap into into as wide an audience as possible. Yeah. And they keep you know? the prices same. I have to yeah. say, I mean, yeah. they, of, of course they also increase prices, but I think yeah. in the end, compared to what's out there, yeah. Yeah, cap price is same. And, so and in sure. the end, we also let's not forget that a, a watch company mm. is a, a commercial entity. They need to make money. Of course. So yeah. I can understand that uh, in the offices they're thinking, how can we make money? What mm. what will catch on? Yeah. It's just that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but that's trying the, uh, to, to, yeah. to do so uh, in, in a very forced way can also yeah. backfire. It, it, it's yeah. the forced. That's, that's the, yeah. that's I think the, the, the thing. Greed, greedflation is now uh, yeah. backfiring yeah. on a lot of brands. So, but it's interesting. So like, let's look, because we've, we've obviously talked about Tag Heuer, and that felt very forced or very manufactured, the, the, the hype surrounding the, the Kith collaboration uh, in the Formula One. But what about a brand like uh, Tudor, where we see that they are now a little bit everywhere? Suddenly mm-hmm. they're they're in yeah. Formula One. They're doing more cycling. They're, they're cycling, Giro d'Italia. Sailing. They're doing more sailing. They're 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 a little bit present okay. everywhere. It's not like the most hype things. I mean, not to say that the Giro d'Italia is not a, a, an important thing, but like, I mean, but they it's, probably it's, also it's, need it because when I was uh, I was in London uh, two uh, three weeks ago, mm-hmm. I went to a Tudor boutique, which is I think owned by uh, Watch of Switzerland, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, everything was just there, even the new collection that yeah. was introduced so yeah. it's not that they are flying off the shelves either so i think all these brands they feel that it's slower i don't say they do bad yeah. Yeah. But, but it's not like i remember in the in the heydays of panerai mm. that the watches didn't even hit the displays yeah right. they were gone immediately right. yeah. and i think that was yeah. over at some point oh, yeah. and i now feel that's over for almost everyone well except yeah. rolex and royal, yeah. and royal oaks yeah. perhaps I, but i don't think what tudor does is is looking a for thing. for hype no I no what they're what not. they're doing they're is broadening uh, their audience yeah i i think yeah. they're just very aggressively uh, it's almost like um, under the radar positioning not quite under I'm the radar not but really the under the radar i yeah. mean they're, they're sponsoring a formula one team mm-hmm. now no they're yeah very but, prominent but, uh, but they're placing inciting. themselves in in important spaces that that work yeah, for yeah. the brand and then of course they i i didn't really understand the uh, multicolored dial watches uh, that felt th- like they a, wore in miami that was a uh, yeah but i mean but even the uh, the the cycling chrono Mm. that they uh, brought out okay so it's it's kind of themed well they yeah. because they are the official timekeeper of the giro then then they, they release it mm. during the giro d'italia but it's also not a pink and black yeah, watch no. it's a red, red. And, yeah. and black uh, which carbon watch colors. which is uh, it, it's it's light yeah. and uh, so it th- there is a theme there but it's not yeah. i don't think it's overhyped also because no. it's a 5000 something uh, yeah, uh 5, Euro, uh, chronograph yeah. so um so they use it in a in a in a in a different way yeah. i think one of the, yeah. the, the the few brands that is not in pain in that price region is uh, seiko or as we say in the netherlands seiko <laughs> psycho um <laughs> in the price range of yeah what let's say want? under 1500 euros they seem mm. to do quite well i find that interesting because they are producing a lot of watches they're so introducing a lot of novelties yeah, like there's no yeah definitely they, d- they don't stop they don't tone it down it's uh, and it seems that's interesting for me mm. and it seems yeah. that they have such a huge crowd 
Also, yeah. perhaps outside of the watch enthusiasts. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, they're such a household yeah. name. That's the thing. It's the strength, well uh, strength in numbers and yeah. strength and in uh, good pricing. They, no, they, they innovate still. They, they increase price, but they also increase quality. Yeah. Yeah. The new yeah. But there's there, a big yeah. range. You have you have the the Seiko Five uh, Sports uh, range, which yeah. offers a lot of value at around 500 euros. <laughs> and you also have then these, that was a the, little the, bit of a hype when the when that got uh, when that was yeah. when it was yeah. re-released. That yeah, was yeah, a little bit of a hype, but that yeah. was yeah. was more that that was a bit of a sincere hype because they just bring something back. Yeah. And um, and I think only watch enthusiasts yeah. really got yeah. uh, their yeah. panties in a knot because it was <laughs> oh my god that's the watch but that came back for but for others it yeah. was just it's just a very nice new affordable mechanical yeah. watch and yeah. even with their limited editions you don't have the idea oh they're trying to create something no they've always they've but they're just they're do also that. not struggling to be relevant right Seiko is just always there it's sort because of it they are feels yeah like yeah a, yeah they're like confident that they it, are it's yeah just, it's everywhere you see them everywhere if you want a Seiko you can get a Seiko and they still do a lot of collabs. Yeah, exactly. Also with with exactly. things that don't make sense, but like Tissot is also doing collapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, they now also do a collab. Is it, is it it's coming. Uh, it's not out yet. Oh. Yeah. No. <laughs> but they will oh, be okay. doing a collab okay. soon. And yeah. uh, but uh, yeah. there I also feel. Does it make sense? Will it make sense? I don't know. There might be a huge audience for that. Eh? Mm. I, I don't mm. know. But I think brands are really mm. seeking to, yeah, to to ride a hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas a collab, for example, like uh, like uh, like uh, well, we have it here in the in the shelf, but the Omega and Ultraman, there was there was some sort of but it was super niche niche. It was very niche, but there was also a tie that goes back and and yeah. you sort of bring it back and then it was it was yeah. a nod. I remember when we yeah. did this project with yeah. the Speedmaster Ultraman in 2018. So we start preparing in 2017 yeah. already. In 2018 uh, was the watch mm -hmm. released. It was not based on on any hype. No, no. Other no. than the Speedmaster was in huge demand, and um, yeah. there was this this these collectors. They 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 had these things for the Speedmaster Ultraman, the watch from the, the late '60s and, and early '70s that were done uh, with a red or orange uh, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. second hand, and that were used on this uh, TV show in uh, in Japan mm -hmm. called Ultraman. Um, that was just a fun thing, and I yeah. think with with we. Yeah, we kind of went overboard with with some very <laughs> cool kind of graphics and colors yeah. and yeah. just make it but a fun watch. It was, it was a sincere story. It yeah, was just, and and it, it was, was very limited, yeah. and it was not limited to to, to make it a hype because of no. 2012 you wanted watches. to create a very good looking, just and interesting very nice watch. variation yeah. on, yeah. The, on a yeah. Speedmaster. Yeah, uh, that's. Um, but yeah, it's nice if it if it takes off and it, it's sold out. I think one and a half hours mm. or something. That that yeah. is then uh, amazing. Yeah. Cherry uh, on the cake, yeah. basically. Yeah. But it feels like there is there is certainly like an almost like a for for a certain range in the industry a struggle to become to to maintain relevance, especially after the high times uh, uh, of of twenty 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 one etc. Like during those times where we saw that everything had a, a huge boom, likely because of the pandemic, people mm -hmm. didn't really have time to go, mm -hmm. or people couldn't uh, physically go on yeah. on holiday. It was it was uh, locked down. It was very restricted, and and of course um, they people were still could spend their money on. On, on exactly. things, and they so. were still yet very uh, secure with their jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also. yeah. So they had their jobs. They, there was no, uh, <laughs> there was no uh, decrease in uh, demand for uh, for work. Mm. I think there were a, a lot of vacancies as well. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't spend it. Basically, they, you could not go on a holiday. You no. were just sitting around, yeah. and, uh, and yeah. people become was, agitated. Was, they want to do something. And there was security, but yeah. now it's yeah. different yeah. because of uh, well, uh, Russia and Ukraine, uh, what's happening now in the world. Mm -hmm. People feel less confident, mm. and they, I think they sit a little bit more on their money just yeah. to. Yeah. Get, and you, so watch because brands you never know. Are then left with a year that maybe looks red in the books, and then suddenly it's oh well, how do we how do we how do we beat this? But then at the same time, you have to wonder um, if the approach is not just to like continue down the path that you're on, continue yeah. making good products. Don't try to overdo it. You need to be it, persistent. It's yeah. and it's also the 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 management of expectations. I think people also. are managing their expectations a little bit better. When after COVID, you you were agitated. Yeah. You wanted something new. You wanted excitement. What have you? And then you can easily be uh, caught up yeah. in uh, in your own yeah. enthusiasm and yeah. ride the hype wave yeah. and what have you. Yeah. And now you know that when you buy that new yeah. uh, Targoy Formula One that you're not going to be happier yeah. or healthier yeah. or what have yeah. you. So it, it's also that people have mm. 
become a little bit yeah. more sensible because yeah. of yeah. Uh, and I think you should what's, what's you should happening. not compare today's sales or last month's sales mm. to the sales you did uh, during the, the the pandemic. No, I think you no. perhaps you need to compare it to the. But that's time what before. watch companies always do. Of course, but you need to compare it to like and companies five uh, years ago. General, yeah, but yeah, then, yeah. But then you will see that the prices increased dramatically yeah. of the watches, and oh, it yeah. then also comes oh, yeah. into play. Yeah. And then the problem is the audience who was able to to buy watches back then, or who who made it a priority to do so, mm. and who then because it's the kind of it's like a self uh, justifying kind of tendency to go, I'm doing this because it's cool, and therefore it is cool, and suddenly there yeah. it becomes this sort of echo chamber where then everybody yeah. goes, yeah. yeah, I should do that because it's yeah. cool, and then yeah. and then more, the more people that join in, and then now those mm. people that maybe have taken a a step back, or or where you see that they're being a little bit slower in their in their uh, spending into uh, the world of watches, right? You also see that then because the the secondhand market also takes a little bit of a, yeah. a, a oh, definitely. It, not a slum, but it's just going back to oh, going, it's back, going to back to normal. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing. But people see that and they suddenly go, "Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have invested in." Yeah. And, and so then people kind of maybe burnt their fingers and yeah. now now are, are yeah. being a because little because it bit was more a hype market. You can also yeah. say that was we just we were, were yeah. everything was a hype and, and basically. So, and yeah. some brands did it very yeah. clever. You, you said uh, Fashion Constantin. I will say Tissot with the PRX. Mm -hmm. The timing was awesome. The product is yep. good, and the pricing yeah. is good. So that had all the ingredients, I guess. To absolutely, to, to it was a hype. They did, yeah. but at Tissot, they still some sell of the well. people at Tissot didn't even see it coming. They didn't even understand no, that the no. PRX was going to be big. I think they had to increase production. Yeah, that they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't here in the Netherlands. Uh, I know someone who uh, was very reluctant to 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 uh, <laughs> to get them uh, in, and he said, "Well, I'll take the minimum amount." Yeah. yeah. And then look what happened. And then suddenly, yeah. uh, oh boy, yeah. oh boy, <laughs> give yeah. me some PRXs. Yeah. yeah, no, that's 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 how it goes. And and I think often uh, it's it's a phenomenon that you just can't reproduce. There's no formula. It just has to be. It has to be right. And you can that's try. That's how it should be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But almost taking it too far, it comes across a bit disingenuous, and that can almost Sometimes it like just you said have the cringe. inverse effect. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it yeah. does. I I. I can't imagine that this whole Kith uh, Hoyer thing uh, having a good impact or a good uh, yeah. uh, where it's well. They sold out, right? I don't. I have no I clue. So. Yeah, I I I I, I don't know because there were some that were boutique oh. only, and so it's it's kind of hard to know. I but I wouldn't be surprised if they had. But to outside be honest. the watch bubble, did they get a lot of traction? Did they get a lot of? I saw Max Verstappen was wearing one during yeah. the, yeah, the race but, weekend. Hey, because they sponsored the yeah, team. Of course, so, yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing. It, yeah, it that opens that up to a larger audience. Yeah, I, I, it does. I don't know because they're also 35 millimeter watches. So I think in a way... <laughs> he's uh, this big. Uh, Max, he's very small. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's in Lex's jacket pocket right now, <laughs> yeah. actually. Shut up, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do no, a podcast. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but it's it's the kind of thing where you think it's not... It doesn't seem like, like also, a very commercially... Yeah, that's also kind of... I don't think... We will see Tag Heuer release that as a, as a with a regular Tag Heuer logo in regular production. We might, but I think that they would size it up a little bit. Yeah, but the could thing be. is, if they would have done that, if they would have just mm -hmm. released it as a Tag Heuer a for nine for nine hundred and ninety nine euros, yeah, I think it would have been completely different. And you would have had to do one before the other. Right, yeah. you do the one where it's like here's the reinvented uh, Formula One yeah. reissue, but slightly bigger, yeah. uh, perhaps to try and make it more commercial. And then now we follow it up with a, oh, but you want the, the the one that's true to the original? Okay, that's yeah. the Kith collaboration. But also don't put Kith in. They the logo. chose to ride the hype train. Well, they just have yeah. taken. T they should have taken just the the regular yeah. one at uh, nine oh six. Exactly. I found exactly. it very <laughs> daring that they changed <laughs> the logo at Tag Heuer. <laughs> yeah. That's also yeah. something. Why? Yeah, it's kind of a real. It's a bit of a. From what we hear from from uh, our colleague Jorg, who who has has experience in in design and and these kinds of things, he says it's quite a faux pas to change your yeah. to change your logo. Yeah. It's it's. Uh, Louis Vuitton did it with the uh, Red Chap Red Chap uh, collaboration. Oh, yeah. It was the first time they changed the Louis Vuitton logo. Hmm. So it might come also a little bit from there. Same group, of course. It is. Right. Group, Let's be confident. Right. Let's change the Tag yeah. logo for this yeah. collaboration. Yeah. But I think it's daring. Hmm. Uh, well, marginal, of course, but um, um, to change your like corporate your your image, it mm -hmm. certainly goes against the 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 theory on design, right? So the, in yeah. a way, it, it, yeah, it's a bold choice, and yeah. and, and it might uh, it might yeah. uh, it might have worked out. Uh, 
yeah, I mean, you know, in the end, it's one of those things where because of the nature of the industry, and this is maybe another point for another podcast, everything feels like it's on, on, on four times speed, right? So we're, we're it's, just like on to the next also, thing. Yeah, uh, that's, it's very, that's very true. Know and it's there also, will be the next thing, right? I, I, mean, I don't think this whole hype thing is for the watch industry. I, the, no. the, keep it, I, I mean, of course, yes, you want to sell watches so you're a commercial uh, company, that's fine. But also just keep the pace of the, that, that, that suits you. And know your They're, audience. Yeah, know your audience. And also, do, yeah, don't try to be a, a, a fashion brand. No. It, it, some so, uh, Hublot pulls it off in, in no. a way, but... Um, but it's not. It's also it's no. not sneakers, right? It's not. No, you're not. You're not. Buy, I mean, you might. And if people really are well aware it. that you're. Th these are not disposable objects. No. You don't want to exactly. become across as a disposable object. Not in these. You uh, want to enjoy the, the watch for years <laughs> to come, right? Yeah. 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 Um, that, that's also a thing. Because yeah. the minute that it becomes a hype thing, then you'll see that a lot of people will buy it, and then as soon as the hype dies down, a fifteen hundred euro hype it. thing that you will uh, wear for a year, and, and probably uh, no two years, and then the battery dies, and then you won't get well, the battery replaced, or, or, or even worse, you'll be giving fuel to the people that are just flipping stuff. Like you, you saw a That's lot in the first right. yeah, week. We didn't that even were already talk about the flipping stuff. It wasn't even out. They were already on on yeah, Chrono twenty four. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of those things yeah. where That's where you sort of go, oh, that it's that's it, annoying. It's no right? fun yeah. at that point. When is the last time you were uh, caught in hype? Was it the Moon's Watch or yeah. you don't you didn't buy one, right? I didn't buy one. No, I was uh, one you of were the resistant. Few, um, I'm I'm yeah. hype proof. I'm I'm yeah. I'm I'm fully in awe of the whole uh, Moon Swatch uh, concept, yeah. the initial one. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit sad what they did after. But oh, the, I like the, the, first the, the, the I have to say I like the one with the Snoopy. I think that's a mm -hmm. cool oh. thing. But that's also a bit more niche niche. Yeah. if you know, you know, kind but, of thing. Mm. Original Moon Swatch. Yeah, love it, Those and I yeah. still love my uh, Mission on Earth yeah. uh, one. I think yeah. it's uh, it's brilliant, and it's. Uh, I I do, I wouldn't discard getting one at some point because I do I do like the idea, but I think for me. What what really put me off was the the whole idea of first of all there was there was too much too much waiting in line and all this stuff and and I thought ah well maybe at some point once once it's really cooled off and I can really think this is the one I want I'm just gonna go pick it up casually like yeah. walk into the shop mm -hmm. and actually yeah. be able to get yeah. it for me that whole game of like having to wait in line which ones do you have today uh, and all this stuff it was a bit it was a bit too much so but maybe yeah. now that everything's cooled off uh, quite a bit then maybe. Maybe it's I, yeah, the time I, yeah, to have one just for the, fun. The mission on Earth, we walked into the uh, Zurich airport oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. boutique and then we got one. Yeah. Uh, you, you got, what did you get there? The uh, Jupiter, Jupiter, right? Yeah, the Jupiter. Yeah, yeah. The Jupiter, the Venus, the yeah. Alaska yeah. and... Yeah. 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 So, to be honest, I think I would be much more keen on getting that uh, that uh, Ocean of Storms. The blank pan, the black one. That came out. That's the nice thing one. is that it, the and that's the coolest I'm, one. I'm of glad the you <laughs> you point that one out because I saw that one the other day, and mm -hmm. it is a good looking watch. But the thing is that after the whole moon swatch thing, when they came with the the initial mm -hmm. uh, colored uh, yeah, uh, watches, yeah, yeah. I yeah. completely zoned out. I thought, okay, <laughs> so you're trying to do something, and yeah, and I also didn't like the look of it, and I didn't like the whole concept because the nudie branches. Yeah, the you weren't keen on the nudie branches. No, no. Sea slugs. No sea slugs. <laughs> nah, not my not my spirit. The it's not my spirit and animal. Space travel no. and the blank pan fifty fathoms, of mm -hmm. course, nudie mm -hmm. branches. But the black one, <laughs> it's just a very good looking watch. Yeah, and also I I well, dare I, I say it's the best looking fifty fathoms in regular <laughs> production. <laughs> Yeah, which is hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I think, yeah, we, yeah, I think yeah. we'll have to do a Sunday morning <laughs> show no where, where we put up <laughs> yeah. the the where we put that one up against the now forty two millimeter. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we do I would pick the black one actually. Then yeah. it's also uh, it's also I think for me realistically more uh, something that I'll be able to afford within my mm. within my lifetime. I mean, you know, you never know, yeah, right? Put a I mean, decent but, uh, strap on it because exactly. you have to uh, change the strap, and then yeah. it's actually a very good looking watch. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think that the, that it's the hype is something for for brands to be aware of, for buyers to be aware mm -hmm. of, um, and it can be fun. But also, yeah, don't let it put you in a, in a in a situation in which you kind of overstep your position for the sake of hype. I think that it's yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's 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 the thing. But we'll see what uh, we'll see what the what the industry brings at the over the over the course of the next uh, uh, this year and the coming years. Uh, but uh, but yeah, for now it seems to be this sort of very hype hype centric approach to 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 staying relevant and to staying uh, yeah. uh 
yeah, in people's minds. Uh, but uh, but yeah. So let's uh, let's the get to our uh, let's get to our comment of the week, which is actually I think probably at this point a comment. It's a, a bit of a stale comment. It's from two weeks ago. We're putting it in the microwave. Uh, we're uh, we're, uh, we're reheating it. <laughs> reheating a, re a comment. comment. Okay. Um, yes. So this is from Mossmarb, who says uh, it was. It's about uh, Mossmarb commenter Mossmarb. Mossmarb. Probably shouldn't say people's usernames. They're very confusing and. and but anyway, this is about uh, co the Collecting Watches uh, podcast, which at the time that we're recording this is the, the latest one. So we're, we're a little bit ahead. Um, very anyway, hyped episode. Super interesting stuff. It's very hyped. Very, uh, so, but the comment is, uh, and it's a very long comment, so oh. it's great that I'm, okay, I'm proceeding I'm, uh, it with a long-winded uh, introduction. Um, he says, I'm... I'm kind of with RJ as a vertical collector, formerly of Hoyer Carreras, now building a small Speedmaster collection. Very smart guy. And he says, I think we're always going to be smaller in numbers, vertical collectors, um, less common occurrence, um, compared to horizontal collectors with a wider, with a wider, mm -hmm. uh, wider, wider taste. But vertical collectors are often some of the most dedicated. I disagree. No. I think the, the diagonal collector, <laughs> I guess the, the diagonal yeah. collector. Yeah. I think you should always zigzag. Zigzag collection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but it's true. I think I think there's probably, and you could probably speak to it, that there's there's a satisfaction to being a collector of something very specific because then it gives you this. Yeah, this it's also with, uh, within a frame, so you can really dive in deep in the in the yeah. in the in the subject and uh, <laughs> try to get some real expertise on on, on a certain watch or yeah. model. Yeah. And uh, we had uh, the legendary uh, uh, George Kramer in our team. Mm. Uh, he passed away uh, uh, last year. Um, he was also a vertical collector of Cartier watches. Yeah. But he also, no, but he was, at the same time, he was also a horizontal collector. Yeah, but I am as well, because I also buy yeah. different it, brands, different watches, but I collect Speedmasters. If you could, if he you collects Cartiers. If you could describe it as this, then, then vertical uh, collecting is actual collecting and horizontal it's collecting is hoarding. It's hoarding. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But that, that, that is diagonal. kind of what it is. Anyway, it's uh, <laughs> it's yeah. hoarding. Yeah. 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 yeah, but it's good because you also develop a certain type of like connoisseurship. You develop this knowledge you you go really into the rabbit hole. You read the books. You you, you yeah. gather that that mm -hmm. knowledge, and then before you know it, you're you're an expert in the uh, in, in the field. If you really go before go you know it, it takes it. time and dedication. No, of course, of course, and sacrifice. Of course. Yeah, but you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> you're having fun. I, you're, you're gaining expertise. I think there's. I, I don't believe there's an expert that knows all about Cartiers or Speedmasters or Rolexes. No, of course, and of course. I think a lot of people they come uh, very far. I know <laughs> a guy who knows everything about Panerai. Oh really? Mm. Is this the is end of the this room uh, with show? Yes, like. <laughs> it is the end of the show. Yes, perfect. All right. <laughs> well, thanks, uh, thanks for the discussion, and uh, and uh, uh, yeah, as always, thank you for tuning in. Thanks, guys, for the discussion, and make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment below, and as always, tune in next week for another episode of Fratello Talks. See you then. <laughs>